Hello, I'm Shauna Lawhorn with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition D, a ballot measure which will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 8th. Currently, under city law, various city boards, commissions, and officials generally must review and make decisions to approve or deny the development of new housing. Development of new housing must comply with the city's planning and building codes. State law generally requires the project to be evaluated for impacts on the environment. The city has affordable housing programs that offer housing for sale or rent at below market rates. Affordable housing has restrictions on eligibility for households, such as maximum household income. Proposition D would streamline the approval process by exempting certain affordable housing developments from a number of approvals by the city if those developments comply with the planning and building codes. When the city leases its property or provides financing for these housing projects, the Board of Supervisors' approval would not be required. The proposition would streamline approval of three types of multifamily affordable housing. Under the measure, the city would have five to eight months to approve these developments, depending on the number of units, and the measure may also allow these developments to proceed without environmental review under state law. If Proposition D passes with more votes than Proposition E, then Proposition E would have no legal effect. If you vote yes, you want to streamline approval of affordable housing projects that provide multifamily housing, where all units are for households with income up to 140% of area median income, and the average household income of all residential units can be no more than 120% of area median income. Additional affordable housing units equal to at least 15% of the number of affordable on-site units required, or that all residential units are for households that include at least one San Francisco Unified School District or City College employee with certain household income restrictions. Projects that use city property or city financing would no longer require Board of Supervisors approval. The Board of Supervisors could amend city law to apply these streamlined approvals to additional types of housing projects. In certain projects, contractors must provide health care benefits and offer apprenticeship opportunities. If you vote no, you do not want to make these changes. I'm here with Corey Smith with the Housing Action Coalition and a proponent of Proposition D. Welcome. Thank you. We're also joined by Joseph Smook from the Race and Equity in All Planning Coalition and an opponent of the measure. Thanks for having me. Thank you both for being here. I'd like to start with Corey. Why do you believe this proposition is so important? Uh, well, thank you, Sean, and thank you to the, the League for hosting this event and for SFGov TV for, for recording and distributing. Uh, so Proposition D is not definitely going to build housing is the Affordable Homes Now measure. It's a measure that's going to make it faster and easier to build affordable housing across all of San Francisco. And it does things in a few different ways. It first of all takes the approval process, which currently takes four to seven years, and narrows it down to, to just a matter of months. This increase in, in efficiency and approvals for code compliant projects, so projects that follow all of the local planning codes and rules, will ensure more certainty throughout the process and make sure that housing and affordable housing gets built faster. The other key point that we have is there are very, very strong labor provisions that match the recently approved by the legislature Assembly Bill 2011. Those include prevailing wages for construction workers, healthcare opportunities, as well as apprenticeship programs. And a combination of all of these, it, it gives San Francisco a choice in how we actually want to approach the next decade in the future. And quite frankly, the, the time of saying no is behind us. We have to start saying yes. We have to start saying yes to housing. We have to start saying yes to affordable housing. And the way that we do that is by passing Proposition D, the Affordable Homes Now measure, this November. Thank you. Joseph, your thoughts? 
So um, we have a number of problems um, with Proposition D, which is why I'm here, and thanks again for, for having us. Um, so the Race and Equity in All Planning Coalition is a coalition of nearly 40 organizations, grassroots organizations, nonprofit housers, cultural districts from throughout San Francisco. Um, we have a vision of building a San Francisco that is equitable um, and that is affordable for all. Um, a number of the problems that we have with Proposition D is that it says that it provides more affordable housing, um, but the problem is that the affordable housing provision is not something that affordable housers need, which is why the Council of Community Housing Organizations is opposed to, the, to Proposition D. Um, it says that it provides educator housing. Um, however, the teachers union is opposed to Proposition D um, because it doesn't provide teachers what they need. Um, and then on the market rate side, um, what it does is it confers a ton of value, millions of dollars of value to developers without actually promising to build anything. Um, a couple of problems that we have that are more specific um, is that it's called affordable homes now, but the problem is that it actually redefines, it's part of the key pro, um, component of the measure is to create a new definition for affordable um, at 140% of the area median income. And that 140% of area median income, when you compare it to um, what market rate is, um, it's actually higher than market rate. Um, it also doesn't require any family-sized units. So the trend in the market currently of developers to build only studios um, will continue. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We have a couple questions for both of you, and we'll start with you, Joseph. So Proposition D aims to streamline the construction of affordable housing, but has some caveats that may actually impede construction, such as not requiring developers to build the housing within a certain time frame. How do you envision or not envision that Proposition D will actually result in the expedited construction of truly affordable housing? That's a great question, and that's actually one of the points that I ran out of time to address um, in my opening remarks. Um, part of the problem with Proposition D is that, um, as Corey mentioned earlier, it expedites the entitlements. Um, but once those entitlements are conferred, and developers then have that increased value that's conferred to them with the entitlements, it doesn't require them to build until um, 36 months after those entitlements are conferred. Um, it's part of the problem that we have with the way that Affordable Homes Now, Proposition D, has been, um, has been billed, which is um, that it will bring more units online faster, but in fact, what it does is it commodifies, further commodifies um, speculative activity in the development uh, world um, and doesn't necessarily bring those units online. Thank you. Same question to you, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. As mentioned, Joseph's correct. All permits, building permits, do expire after 36 months. And the reality is, is that people who build housing for a living want to build housing. That is always the goal for people who, who finance housing, who construct housing, uh, who design housing, the architects. Uh, so it's always been a goal to try to get both the entitlement process, which this is focusing on, as well as the permitting process, to actually go faster. Uh, we were proud to sponsor a piece of state legislation, Assembly Bill 2234, which actually aimed to improve the post-entitlement building permit acquisition process to ensure that cities do respond in a timely fashion. Uh, and, and if that happens, if the entitlement process is efficient and the building permit acquisition process is more efficient, that's how we get affordable homes now. That is how we actually get shovels into the ground and create homes for people that the city so desperately needs. Okay, thank you. I have a second question and we'll start with you, Corey. Proposition D requires a prevailing wage for construction workers on affordable housing projects and some level of professional training or qualifications for some workers. Can you please clarify how workers will be protected under Proposition D and how those requirements will be enforced? Yeah, absolutely. And this is actually, like I said, it, it's wonderful that this matches the bill that was just passed in the, in the state legislature, Assembly Bill 2011. Uh, so the requirements are prevailing wage, which Prevailing wage is, is basically a dollar amount that people need to be able to make in order to, to actually construct the housing that we are going to be building. Healthcare opportunities. The majority of construction workers in the state of California do not have healthcare. And so by requiring healthcare opportunities for not only the workers, but their families, we know we're gonna be providing a stronger social safety net uh, for, for all residents. Uh, and then the apprenticeship programs. I mean, one of the big issues that we have in California right now is there's a labor shortage. There's a skilled labor shortage. And so uh, because the 
Northern California Carpenters Union, who is one of our proud partners in this, they were at the table early on saying, hey, we need to actually move things forward. We need to put solutions on the table. And this is one of those measures that will not only benefit the construction workers from the Carpenters Union, but all unions across the board. Same question for you, Joseph. Um, uh, your feelings about the requirements that are in Proposition D for workers? Yeah, so from the opposition side, uh, Proposition D doesn't go far enough. Um, it's one of the reasons why the Building Trades Council um, and the Labor Council are opposed to Proposition D. Um, the, um, what they require generally is that there be a requirement for skilled and trained workers. Um, it helps to close the gap between wages and housing costs um, and is extremely important to the building trades that would actually be building these buildings. Um, one of the things that's curious to us is that um, one of the things that Proposition D is pushing is for form-based density for larger um, buildings to be built um, that are residential, um, and that generally means t a tendency towards concrete and steel buildings. It's curious to us that the Carpenters Union would be supporting Proposition D, even though um, what this proposes isn't uh, a building type that necessarily the Carpenters would be invested in. Okay, we're gonna move to closing statements now, and we'll start with Corey. Any other thoughts that you'd like to give us on Proposition D? Like I said, San Francisco's got a really unique opportunity and a choice in front of us if, if we want to continue moving forward and actually value uh, our residents like we claim that we do. Proposition D is supported by Supervisor Matt Dorsey, Senator Scott Wiener, and Mayor Lyndon Breed. It was put on by a large coalition of pro-housing advocates, labor unions, and nonprofit affordable housing developers. We're very proud to say that the Northern California Carpenters Union is one of our strongest coalition partners, as well as policy think tanks like SPUR, advocacy groups like YIMBY, and affordable housing developers like Mission Housing, Economic, or Mission housing uh, Development Corporation, as well as Habitat for Humanity. And, and Habitat for Humanity, I think, is really an interesting one because they, they see a problem from a wide perspective. And they look all across the state about how we need to be building uh, more homes for people faster. And it was put on the ballot by 52,000 San, 52, San Francisco voters. And so uh, encourage everybody, read the facts, look at what these do, and vote yes on Proposition D. Thank you. Joseph, final thoughts? Um, so part of the problem that we have with this is, again, that um, what Proposition D does is it streamlines primarily market rate housing. Um, by redefining affordable to 140% of median, we're looking at um, housing that San Franciscans really can't afford. Um, bringing new lines, uh, bringing new housing online doesn't necessarily solve the problem. San Francisco, during its current eight-year housing element cycle, overbuilt market rate housing by 10,000 units. And housing prices continue to outstrip wages. Um, so we're concerned that what Proposition D does is it doubles down on failed housing policies. And what we need to do is focus our housing policies on real, true, affordable housing for San Francisco workers, families, seniors, um, and those who, who are being priced out of the city. Thank you. And thank you both for being here and for your time and your willingness to inform the public about this measure. Thank you. Thanks for having us. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information about this and other ballot measures in the November election, please visit the Department of Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall starting on October 11th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 8th.